we are here to learn about the business plan badge. We have a guest speaker, Ed Slot, with us. And um, when Miss Cindy is ready, we will have our recording starting. Already done. Okay. So welcome everyone and welcome to Ed Slot. He is here with us for the business plan. So Ed, I'll hand it over to you. Welcome. All right, welcome everyone. And this is a great idea, the business plan. I see the mission statement, the uh, five steps. You know, uh, most of this is geared towards selling cookies, but I think there's a bigger message here that can carry you for the rest of your life. Uh, this is not only a business plan, it's really a life plan. Cookies may be one thing, but I'm sure there'll be bigger things coming down <laughs> for the rest of your life. So let's go through these five steps which is a great plan for really anything uh, you want to accomplish. Let's see, now I'm on the slides here. Here's, here's the first step, write your mission statement. Now I got this from the Girl Scouts and it's a great little guide. Uh, write your mission statement. To me, these are your goals and there are, I find in life there's really two kinds of goals. There's short-term goals and long-term goals. And really on the long term, you gotta understand why you're doing something and whatever you're going to write and hope to do, I always find it's better if you make it achievable. Because if you take on too much and get disappointed, you may not get to the other step. Uh, one of the things, uh, actually, I think it comes down to three steps. And again, in life, uh, selling cookies or anything. And the three steps that always seem to help people get where they wanna go, in my experience anyway, is number one, to focus on what's most important to you. Also, take the long view. There may be other steps on the way, but know where you want to end up, even if it's a short-term goal, where do you want to end up? And then third, obviously, is take action because uh, focusing and knowing what you want to do are meaningless if you don't do anything. You know, that's like people watch that show, I don't even know if it's still on, the biggest loser. Uh, they watch the show and they say, how come I didn't lose any weight? Because you're just watching. You're not doing anything. You're not the one who lost the weight. It's the people on TV that are actually doing something. Now on the, uh, the uh, long view, I don't know, did any, has anybody ever heard, now this goes way back even before me and Cindy and before Christine and before any of us, uh, anybody ever hear of the name of Margaret Mitchell? You could raise your hand if you ever heard who she, uh, anybody want to write in why she's famous? You could write it in on the chat. I don't remember. All right, I won't waste a lot of time because, but you may want to look it up. 85 years ago, she wrote Gone with the Wind in Atlanta. Oh, somebody wrote it. Angela wrote it, Emma. How did you guys know that? You must know your history. That's pretty good. Well, there's a story about her. I was, when I was traveling a lot before this whole pandemic hit, I was on the road all the time for 30 years. Anyway, recently I was in Atlanta and I happened to pass by walking around the Margaret Mitchell house. And she wrote Gone with the Wind 85 years ago in 1935. But I bring this up because when you read about her, it took her 10 years to write that book, which is kind of unbelievable. But here's the interesting thing. She wrote the last chapter first. She began with the end in mind. She knew where she was going. It just took all that time to get there. So that's what I mean by your long-term goals. You begin with the end in mind, just like she did. That's a good guide. And the end in mind doesn't have to be 10 years. It could be what you're going to do next week, but have a goal. This is the, these are the things. This way you'll be on track to hit those things. If you don't know where you're going to end up, how are you gonna get there anyway? So those are the three uh, big ideas that I found. Focus, uh, know what's most important to you, take the long view. So there may be bumps along the way, but always take action. And it doesn't matter if it's big or little action. I always find even baby steps, which are more achievable, lead to big victories. So that's one thing. And uh, 
Also, you may want to keep a list. Uh, I keep a book. I've actually done this, a day book. I actually dug up one. I've been doing this for about 30 years. Now, years ago, back in the 80s, I used a big book like this, it looks like. And uh, I had all my stuff. Matter of fact, I know how old it is because there's one day here my daughter was born and I wrote that in here. And, uh, they, and she's uh, 31 already. So I know it's been a long time. But now I still do it. I have books for oh, probably over 40 years. I knew what I had to do every day. So today, here's my book for today. And you'll see on here, oh, 9 p.m., Girl Scouts webcast with Christine Walker. See, that's on my list. So I prepared. I have my little notes. Always good to prepare. Any kind of thing you do, you want to do it well. So develop good habits and stick to it. That's all it really takes to write a mission statement and, uh, and your business goals. And leave them flexible. Things change. Stuff happens all the time. Look what we're doing now. Everybody's on a webcast. You were probably expected to be at a live meeting. You never know what's going to happen. So be flexible. Don't worry if it, it doesn't work out uh, perfect. You may find you have a goal and you're on your way, but then you take a detour for some reason. So ooh, that's a little better. I didn't know, I didn't know about that. Uh, I was just reading in uh, Forbes magazine. Now, this is a, probably a bigger goal. The, the, uh, it just came out today. The Forbes, I think they call it the 400 richest people. You don't have to be a billionaire. But the guy on the cover is the guy who started Netflix. And of course, he's a multi-billionaire. But if you read the story, uh, many years ago, he tried. here's how he got the idea. He was renting a movie. It's something called Blockbuster. Anybody remember that? blockbuster movies. It was a store where you would go in. I know Cindy and Christine know it, but uh, for the girls, I don't know if they, I, I know there's one left, I think in Oregon or Washington. Where is that one that's left? Anybody know? Somewhere in the Northwest, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's one left. Anyway, you would go in there and rent a movie and you'd have to give it back. Anyway, this guy did that and uh, he got a $40 late fee and it bothered him so much. He started his own company with movies. That's Netflix now. So you never know where your ideas may end up. You know, little things like that can lead to big things. So that's the first step. Uh, and uh, let's move on and I'll, I'll cover some more of these things. Increase your customer base. See, now this is big in anything you'll ever do, in selling cookies, or even now, I understand, I didn't know this before, uh, because Christine told me that you had fall products. Now, I never even knew that. And my daughter was a Girl Scout for only about a year, many years ago. I didn't know they had candy, nuts, and I think magazines and stuff like that. Uh, so increase your customer base. I think it's always going to come down to the same thing it was always, networking. Obviously, the more you people you know, that's what networking is. Uh, the more people you know, uh, the more people they know, and the more people they know. So you never know who you meet. Everybody you meet is a potential asset to you, and you should treat them like that. You should always treat people with honor and respect and never put a, uh, something over on anybody or trick anybody. See, that's what I mean. That's a short-term gain, but you'll never get the order again. You always want to do what's right. I've actually, you're, you always want to do uh, more than what's right. Uh, always do your best because that will always come back to you. And always feel, uh, treat the other person well so they want to do business with you. So one of the ways to increase your customer base is something called leverage. Uh, here's what I mean. You're going to put it, have to put in some kind of energy, some kind of work, some kind of time to do anything valuable. So as long as you're going to put in that kind of time and work, you may as well get a bit bigger payoff for it, whether it's in more cookies or more of anything or a better job or a better business, better anything. And that's called leverage. It means uh, getting more out of less. In other words, at the same time, get a bigger result. Uh, here's an example. Uh, do any of you, I don't know, I, I would never ask any of you how much you weigh. But I'm sure somebody, do you think you could pick up, let's say you're, I don't know, 50, 60 pounds. I'm looking at it. Who knows what anybody, uh, 
Do you think a 50 pound person could pick up another? Do you think any of you could just pick up one of the other girls and put it six feet over your head? You could if you were on a seesaw, right? You just go down and they go up. That's called leverage. Well, you, you, you're, put, you're lifting somebody, but you're using leverage. Uh, there's, a, there's something on the back. Let me see if I have one. Here's what I mean. The problem most people don't use it is because most people don't know what it means. This is a, a $1 bill. You see that? Now, on the back of a $1 bill is the great seal of the United States of America. And if you look really close in there, it has our national motto. Anybody know our national motto? You could type it in if you know. I don't see anybody typing it in. All right, I'll give you two, three more seconds. When, oh, it's close to that. No, that's not it. Celine's close. That's actually on here, but that's not known as our mod. That's it, Cindy. Oh, Cindy, ty Cindy typed that in. E pluribus unum. Anybody know what that means? It means from many, one. It's Latin for, for from many, one. And if you look at E pluribus, don't look on there because it's spe uh, spelt wrong for both people. Look at the back of the $1 bill. It's spelt right there. <laughs> e pluribus unum. And uh, if you notice, that has 13 letters in it. Anybody know why that has 13 letters in it? I'll give you a hint. It's from history. Oh, come on, How you guys. There we go. Up? Julia got it. Colonies, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, everybody's got that one. That's exactly where it came from. The 13 letters represented each of the colonies that became state. So for many, one. Now, why did I spend so much time as, on that e pluribus unum for many, one? Uh, it's because it's only good for a motto, not in business. You want to do the opposite. That's bad for business. In, if, in business, you want the opposite. From one, many. That's what leverage is, to do, have the same time and the same work, but produce bigger results. So how could you do that? Well, instead of, say, if, let's bring it down to a box of cookies. Why sell a box when you could sell a case? You know, I always look at everything at 10 times. If I'm going to do something, I want 10 times the return. If I'm going to sell one box, I say to myself, why am I bothering with that? Yeah, you might sell one box here or there. But why not sell uh, many boxes? And that goes into increasing, you know, this is that step, increasing your customer base. I'll tell you a story, uh, probably won't sound good, but uh, my little girl, uh, she's almost 30 now, my little one, I still call her. But uh, when I think she was five or six, I don't know if it was brownies. Do they still have brownies? I mean, not the ones you eat, brownies like Girl Scout brownies. You know what I mean? That, is that still a thing? What age does that go up yes. to? Yes, that's um, probably at that time it was kindergarten first, maybe. Yeah, I think she was in brownie, she was like five or six. So this is back, like I said, almost uh, 25 years ago, something like that. Anyway, so, you know, the first thing we heard about was Girl Scout cookies. So I took her down the block and, uh, you know, to sell cookies. And it broke my heart. The only thing she learned about that little walk, which we never ever did again, was rejection. <laughs> but that's something you have to learn. Not everything works out. So I felt so bad. I remember one guy two doors away. Every time I go by that house and they don't even live there anymore, I still remember it. He slammed the door. No, nah, I don't want any. I you got a little girl here. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I felt so bad for her. I said, we're not doing this anymore. This is, this is probably not good, good for you. So what did I do? I bought all the cookies myself, okay? And I put them in my office. I bought it, probably not a good lesson. I said that already. <laughs> uh, I bought all the cookies myself, but I realized, why is she selling one? When people, businesses like me could buy cases at a time. And at that time, I was a tax accountant. I had account. I'm still an accountant, but I really don't do that much anymore. I do more business consulting, and we do programs and seminars and training. We're an education company. But at that time, I was a tax accountant, a CPA. I still am. 
And I brought all the cookies into the office. And every time somebody came in to do their taxes, you know, taxes, you girls don't know what that is yet, probably, but you'll learn soon enough. They're miserable. Uh, the only way to teach you about taxes is if I were to give you a bowl of ice cream, but before I gave it to you, I ate half of it. That's taxes, okay? You get what's left. So most people don't like coming to do their taxes. So by the time we finish with them, they, you know, they're worn out, they have their receipts, do I owe money? You know, it's very stressful for some people. So at the end, we would bring them into the back room where we had cases of these Girl Scout cookies and we had them assorted. We bought every flavor, you know, every of uh, like all the ones like you have here on this picture, I had a case of every one of them. And we brought them in the back and said, uh, pick whatever you want. And this way, after a stressful event, they walked out, ooh, Thin Mints, and it made their day. They thought this was the greatest thing that ever happened. And we had actually increased business. People came in there, uh, and they didn't even care what they paid for their tax returns as long as they went home with some cookies. They thought that was great. So you might look to expand your customer base. So looking at businesses, I know you can't get out right now, but at some point, uh, instead of just selling one box at a time or sitting in front of a supermarket. Again, networking, see the people you know, your parents know. Uh, after my daughter finished, had her you know, one year or whatever it was, uh, obviously I didn't buy cookies from her anymore, but there was another girl across the street. And I actually went to them and I said, you know, I'll buy a bunch of cases because uh, we've been doing that every year up until I think last year, I ran out of girls. <laughs> every, I, I was kept watching on the block every time a girl was of the age where they were selling cookies. So uh, pretty much any of the girls that, uh, that I bought the, buy, the cases from were, were usually like up at the top of their troop <laughs> in sales. So look to leverage, look to get more, more out of the same effort. Instead of sitting in front of a supermarket or selling one box at a time, maybe look at stressful type businesses. I was gonna say a dentist, that's high stress, but I don't know if a dentist wants people eating cookies, but a sly dentist might say, ooh, more cavities. <laughs> You never know, but think about places where you could sell by the, tr by the case load. Who wants to sell a box when you could sell a case? So it's about networking, leveraging, getting more out of the, out of the same effort. If you're going to put the effort in, get 10 times worth it. You know, uh, I don't know how many, I think, what are there, 12 boxes in a case, I think. Uh, you know, get 12 times. So start thinking about people. Uh, that might like what you have. And the way you can put it to them, these are great to put in your office. Now, again, not a lot of people are coming into offices, but put on your, uh, your thinking cap. You run into people every day. We're, and people always love Girl Scout cookies, especially when they get them for free. They see them in an office. Now, you're not giving them for free. You're selling them. But it's great for businesses like me. I love doing it. People love to come here. It creates a good feeling wherever you go. So a lot of businesses, stores might have them. Think bigger. That's, that's really the message for increasing your customer base. You have to have a, a following, too. So start making a name. Uh, you know, uh, Everybody needs a following. I know this is a big thing on the internet now, how many likes you get, but not that kind of following. The following of people that mean something to you. Keep a, a list of names. Uh, you meet somebody every day and see how can you, you know, think, make their life a little better and always put their name down. You never know when it comes around and somebody uh, let them know that you're available, just like people used to let me know on the block. Oh, I used to have to ask. They didn't even let me know. Uh, each I've gone through, I'd say, maybe 10 girls over the years, and each of them had three or four years in or whatever it was, uh, maybe two years, and I kept looking for new ones, and I had the local mothers looking for me. <laughs> so, you know, put your name out there. You got to be out there to do it. That's all, but get more out of the same effort. You only have uh, so much time on this earth. So make it count for more than one box at a time. And that goes for anything. If you're going to put in effort at a job or anything, get the most out of it, leverage it. And, and that's what successful people do. All right, get into the details. Well, uh, this is a good one. 
Uh, the details is about, I think, keeping notes, keeping promises, being prompt, being early. Uh, you know, these are good details. These are good attributes. One of the things we always do, and this is a great, uh, great, not only for cookies, but for ever, anything, under promise and over deliver. Always give more than they expect. Everybody loves that. If you're going to promise them something at a certain time, be early. Don't, don't ever be late. Don't ever break a promise. I mean, you can't keep everything, but don't promise what you cannot deliver. Uh, that's something people always remember. But they also remember, oh, you know that girl, uh, I'm looking at some of the girls, Angela there. Okay. That girl, Angela, whenever she uh, gets, whenever she says she's going to do something, she shows up early. She always gives more. She always goes the extra mile. You'll get a, a, a lot farther than most people in this world by just going, there's a saying called going the extra mile. It means doing more than you're asked for. Because at some point, when you do more than you're asked for, you'll earn more than the time you're putting in back to that leverage. People want people that give their all, that have the energy and the passion. These are great qualities and people notice them right away because most people don't do it. You know, the average person, sorry to say, they do the bare minimum. That's called average. Average is for average people. You don't want to be average. If you want to be average, you wouldn't be on this program. Only special people are on this program. Average people aren't. You don't want to be like everybody. You want to be at the top, so you want to do be a little better. You want to do better. So uh, you have to give more, uh, give more than what's expected. My secret is uh, sometimes I call it uh, low expectation. I always go low. I always say, well, we could do this. Here, I had a thing, a, a project uh, to, to get in, uh, I think, next week. Now, I told them, I'll, I'll have that to you next week. Uh, because, no, you know, I'm doing this program in New York, so it's late here. It's after nine o'clock. So I had time. I did the whole thing today. Now, when I promised that to, net, for, to them for next week, I knew I was going to be a week early. And then when I give it to them, probably give it to them either tomorrow or Monday, they'll say, wow, this is fantastic. You guys are amazing. But if I had told them, you'll have it next Friday, and I gave it to them Friday, or even worse, a day late, then I have to make up an excuse. Well, the internet was down, it was raining out, and you make up all this nonsense, it never goes well. But people remember when you produce, and you produce ahead of time, and you produce more than what you were asked for. These are the kind of details. And always keep uh, good notes so you uh, know what what was expected here, even on this program. Look at all these notes I kept just for this program. These are the original notes that Christine gave me. You see, I have all my, you can't even see, but I have all my notes written on here. Here's all her emails. Here's the one about that I learned about the, uh, the candy nuts and magazines I went through. It's about preparation. That's what it is. It's preparation. And you know what preparation gives you? Confidence. That's what I always found. When I was prepared, I always came in with confidence. And that's a big differentiator. People can smell confidence on you. And you know it with your friends. If you ask them something and say, well, I don't know, I don't know, you know, wishy-washy, you know they don't know what they're talking about. But when somebody asks you and you're prepared, what's the answer to this? Well, I'll tell you what the answer is to, okay, that person knows. <laughs> they're confident, they know their stuff. That's what you wanna be. But that only comes from advanced preparation, like I did. You know that I went, even though this, you might say, oh, this is just a Girl Scouts program. Uh, this is, I had these notes here. Another thing I did, uh, always prepare, and that's the next step, so I'll leave that to the next step. Uh, but it's about preparation, confidence, and delivering. Delivering the goods, uh, over, under promising, over deliver, uh, and I think that's the secret to success because eventually you get a reputation. Oh, I'm going to give it to that girl, Mia or Harley and uh, some of the girls on this program because she always delivers. I mean, if I need something done, I want to get something, somebody that's more reliable. 
Uh, you're going to make yourself indispensable. That's a word that means they can't do it without you. They need you, they want you, which means you will always earn more money because you, you made yourself valuable. You can make yourself valuable, no question about that. Anybody can. Okay, so let's get into the make a risk management plan. Do you know there's whole businesses on this? One of the biggest businesses on earth is risk management. You may know it as insurance. We insure against everything. We insure the house uh, against uh, a fire or a flood, uh, and we insure cars, and we insure our health in case something bad happens. So the way I look at risk management, always look at what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, I don't, I'm not a doctor, uh, so I don't know this for sure, but I did watch a lot of doctor shows. Uh, I feel like there was an old commercial, uh, I don't know if you remember it, but the guy's always an expert and they ask him, how did you know? Oh, because I stayed at a Holiday Inn. Of course I'm an expert. You remember those commercials? I don't, I, I'm not, I'm no doctor, but it has the guy doing an operation. I stayed at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> of course I know it. But uh, I understand that doctors from doctor shows, I learned this, that after they do what's called a post-mortem, let's say they have a patient and the patient dies and they do like an autopsy and they do what's called a post-mortem. They wanna see what went wrong, like what did we do wrong? Uh, and uh, the patient dies and they say, oh yeah, that's what we did wrong. Yeah, we should have done this. We shouldn't have left all those, uh, all those tools inside them or whatever, you know, that's what we did wrong. All right, we won't do that next time. Now we learn. Well, that's life and death. But I suggest the opposite, a pre-mortem. In other words, they found out after the problem already happened. That's called a post-mortem, after the guy already died. Well, now it's too late. Uh, that's the point. What if you imagine in a, what I call a pre-mortem? In other words, go to the worst. This is a great risk management program. We do this all the time. The worst case scenario, you're out there selling cookies, you have a plan, you're following all these steps, something will always go wrong. You can bank on that. So what's the worst case scenario, the worst thing that ha can happen? And write that down. Think about what's the worst thing that can happen. And then go back from there. If it didn't happen yet, that's the advantage. Go back from there and say, why did that happen? And what could I have done about it? Now. You can't do everything about everything, but maybe the, it turned out you had this whole big plan to go to a shopping center, whatever, and it turns out you got there and it closed. All right, uh, what if that happened? Well, what could I have done about that in advance? I could have scoped the place out. I could, could have uh, taken care more of the details and see, you know, is this a good plan or not? So go to the worst case scenario and see what could, what could I have done uh, to fix that? Also, uh, with risk management, it comes back to, I'm going to say it again, because I think it's important, it's always helped me, again, being early, being on time, being prompt. You never wait till the last minute for anything, because something always happens. This is the reason we got on this program a half hour early, or at least I did, uh, and then the rest came on because that's my nature. I've been preparing for this, you know, most of the day. And I had the A email here. I even prepared here. What could go wrong? I lose my internet. What did I do? I actually printed out the slides here in case something went wrong. I'd have them here with all my notes on them. So I think of these things in everything and nothing Everything I do, I do 100%. You might say, oh, this is only the Girl Scout. To me, this is a professional program, like I would do any of them. I, I give it 100% no matter what it is. You know, I, I, uh, there was a band, it doesn't matter, one of the big bands of the 80s, you wouldn't remember it anyway. But I remember seeing an interview with one of the guys, I forget the band now, but I remember the guy was David Lee Roth. Anybody remember the big band he was in? You could type it in. I can't remember the name of the band, but uh, he was the big singer in that band. I don't see anybody. Nobody. Oh, Van Halen. That's it. Yeah. Cindy. 
Cindy got that. Yeah, Van Halen. So I saw an interview with him, and they were one of the biggest bands of the 80s. I mean, huge. Madison Square Garden, everything. But in the interview, what hit me, he said, when we were starting out, we were nothing. We were in a little bar with like 10 people. And I said to my band, you play this event like we're playing at Madison Square Garden. No matter who's there, I don't care if there's five people, you go all the way. You do 100% like you were in Madison Square Garden playing for, for you know 20,000 people. And wouldn't you know it, they gave it their all. And of the 20 people or so that was there, one was a record company guy. And that's how they got it. Uh, so you never know. I, I do the same thing, just like the preparation you saw I did for this one. You might say, look, there's only 19 people on it. Big deal. I believe I'm going out to the girls. I think bigger. I'm going out to the whole country. And there's going to be somebody on this program, just like there was that one guy in the, in the, uh, in the lonely bar watching them, there's going to be somebody that it's going to have a great impact on. And that's why I love doing what I'm doing. Somebody's going to benefit. You can be the same person uh, with a risk management plan. It's both a risk management, get there early, uh, plan on every possible contingency because something will always figure something will go wrong. Uh, you can't eliminate risk. You see one of the boxes there says, one of the little circles, control risk. You can control it though. You can put I, uh, things in place to say, if what if this happens? All right, then I have plan B. That's what we're talking about, having plan B in case something doesn't work. For example, one of the other things I had in case something happened here with, and I do this now with all these virtual programs, I have Christine's name and number and cell number here. In case something went wrong, I have her uh, right in my cell phone. I could call her and we'll get back on the right track. So I think that's important too, to uh, have a plan B. Not everything's going to go the way it's supposed to be. I found in business, if there's three things I learned, Everything takes longer than you thought it would take. Everything is harder than you thought it would be. And everything costs more than you thought it would. And you have to plan for those things. Don't think that, well, I could get to the supermarket or wherever we're going, I can get there in five minutes. So why don't I just leave five minutes before whatever the time? No, leave early, set up, meet people, you know, go all the way, do it 100%, make, make believe, you know, this is the biggest event. If you treat everything like it's going to be the big event and prepare for it and prepare co uh, contingency plans in case it doesn't work, uh, you're going to be successful in anything you do. And that goes for homework. Now, I was guilty of this too. When I had homework, I was the one sitting up late at night studying, doing homework or studying for exam even early the next morning. Uh, but that didn't work for too long because something would always come up. I always did better when I was prepared and I wrote things down and I had a list just like here. Here's my list for today. This is all, you can't see it here, but these are all my notes. All the things I'm telling you, these are the notes. And you know, I wrote it over three different times. That's one of the ways I learn. That's why it looks like I'm doing it off the top of my head because I know it from writing it over. When I do my speeches, I write out the script, but I write it in hand. You don't have to do that. I find when I write out in hand, it, it uh, crystallizes it. it. In my head, I remember it better just by writing it over and over again. And by the time I've written it two or three times, I've got it uh, you know, into memory pretty much. So that's how I eliminate the risk and uh, being prepared and being early and being prompt and on time, these are all good qualities. So that's the risk uh, management plan. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, on the risk management plan, I had this, uh, this item here about setbacks, disappointment and rejection. I talked about rejection. Not everything's going to go perfect. Yeah, like it says, control risk. Uh, maybe you can't, things are going to happen that are out of your control. Should that a setback or disappointment or rejection, should that make you say, oh, this will never work? No, something else will work. Now you know, if you tried five things uh, and they don't work, now you know those five things don't work. So now you're ahead of the game. I, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was Thomas Edison, the famous inventor, 
but I think it was uh, somebody asked him about investing, uh, inventing. He invented all kinds of things. And uh, at one point, he, uh, he hadn't done much. And they said, what have, you invent what have you learned lately? What have you invented lately? He says, well, I, I, all, I know 10,000 things that don't work. That, that's what I could tell you. So eventually, I'll get to something that does work. That's persistence, another good quality. So keep at it. Don't let it learn from setbacks. Don't let, it, uh, don't let a setback take you back. No reason for that. Now you know that action doesn't work and you'll know for next time. Every, that's what life is. All we do is spend our whole life gaining what's called experience, learning. Sometimes a good experience, sometimes they're bad. You know, all these things I'm talking about, I should have brought it in. I have it out there. I've had this book in my office for uh, probably 40 years. It's by Dr. Seuss. It's called, Oh, the Places You'll Go. You should read that every now and then. It'll take you about five to 10 minutes. That's about it. And it goes through, it, it's brilliantly written. Anybody know the book I'm talking about? It is such an uplifting, positive, but it's not all, you know, ice cream and candy. They show you dark places when things bad happen. You know, he says in there, Dr. Seuss, things will, he, he, there's pages where there's bad things happening and you're in a bad place. But he says, that'll, that'll end. Don't stay there. Get to a better place. It's kind of an uplifting book and it won't take you more than, I don't know, I'd say at the longest 10 minutes to read. Uh, anybody ever read that book? How long does it take to read? Five or 10 minutes? I don't know. I have it out there. We keep it out there. And I looked at it today. Yeah, five minutes, Layla said. Five, five. Uh, Angela said five. Emma said five. Oh, they must be faster readers than me. I looked at the pictures. I stopped to look at it. The pictures are uh, brilliant also. Uh, but it might pick you up every now and then. You know, if things don't go perfectly well. Uh, you look at a book like that, so yeah, so I'll move on. That's all. That's in the past. I'm looking ahead. No, no use looking in the rearview mirror. You already learned from it. Why dwell on it? It's not going to change. Uh, look ahead and see how you can control it. So now get, an ex get expert feedback on your plan. This comes down to just asking. I find that people, most people, love hearing, hearing from people that ask them for help. People love to help people. Remember, I, I know the world is a strange place now and you see all this horrible stuff on the news, but uh, most people really are good people, I find, and they wanna help you. You just have to ask. For example, even uh, on the networking, you know, building your customer base, ask, ask people, ask. Uh, if, if somebody doesn't buy your cookies, for example, all right, maybe they don't want, ask them, maybe why? What could I have done better? Anybody would love to answer that question. You know why? It makes them feel good for two ways. You're looking to them, it makes them feel, oh, they're asking me. I, uh, nobody ever asked me anything. <laughs> and they wanna help you. And probably if you ask somebody, what could I have done better? Do you know somebody at the end, they'll probably move heaven and earth to help you. They'll start looking through their, I was gonna say Rolodex, but that would date me. Uh, look, my phone contacts. Uh, Rolodex is a word that was used a hundred years ago. Forget I even said that. It reminds me of my, uh, I keep calling on my young girl, but uh, I'll bet Cindy and Christine know who Paul Newman is. But a few years ago when my daughter was, I guess about five or six, uh, I don't know, one of those movies came on. And uh, I said, you know who Paul Newman is, right? And my daughter said, yeah, the salad guy. <laughs> All right, so I'm a little out of it, you know, for the Rolodex, but your contact list, it's in your phone. Or remember, I said, keep a notebook. See what people uh, you could ask for help. Everybody wants to help. I find that in most people. It's just most people don't ask. Uh, this is a great step. Get expert feedback on your plan. You could ask people before you even do the plan. Matter of fact, that could help on this step. Make a risk management plan. Because you ask somebody, you show them your plan, you work it out, right? And this brings in your mission statements. Uh, the first state, you know, the, the first slide here, the first step. Remember our five steps, write your mission statement. They all tie together now. Gather expert feedback. 
Well, why don't you get the expert feedback before you even get into all of it, right after you reach, you, you state out your long-term and short-term goals. And you might find somebody says, you know, you really should, all the other girls are going to doing this. Maybe you should try this other place, or I know a person. The, everybody wants to help, I find. I find most people are great people, and if you ask them, they will help you. Uh, that goes for back to networking, increase your customer base. So the expert feedback can work on every one of these steps. They can help you with the details, the risk management plan, your mission statement. They can help you tweak it. One tweak by meaning like one change in there can change everything. You might think, you know, remember you're in your own little bubble really of what you think works. And then what happens is when you ask somebody else they hit you with something and you always have to have an open mind. That's a good quality too. They hit you with something and you say, oh, I didn't think of that. Why don't I do that? Why was I do even thinking about my plan? This one is so much better. And then you start the five steps again. You know, these steps I notice build on each other. You write your mission statement. These are your short-term and long-term goals. You increase your customer base by networking. You get into the details. Uh, uh, by writing everything down and making sure you have everything covered. The same thing with the risk management plan, the plan B, and then you ask for feedback. And that could change all of those four steps. Or you go out, uh, one of the great ways to get expert feedback is just go out and try the plan. If you don't ask anybody, uh, the world will tell you if it works or not. The environment, you will find out soon enough if everything you thought would work would work but that's the benefit of asking somebody. There are many people I'm sure like Cindy and Christine and the Girl Scouts that have tremendous experience. And you could write this down and say, here's my mission statement and business goals. And here's what's important to me. And here's the people I know. And here's the things that might go wrong. And here's how I could sell cases instead of boxes. What do you think of this? And uh, somebody like Cindy or Christine or some of the other adults might say, you know, some of the girls have tried that and here's why it didn't work or here's why maybe you're 80% you're there, but if you tried X, Y, and Z, these one little switch of the, of the plan might open new doors for you. So it's a great world out there, uh, forgetting about what's on the news. I mean, uh, you know, you can't, you got to get out and take care of yourself and do your own thing. And I'm not going to say ignore the world because it is what it is, but there are, look for the good things. That's what I try and do because everything else just makes you miserable and negative and nobody likes to even be around negative people. That's another good quality to be positive and help other people find out what's important to other people. How would you do that? It's called listening. That's a great skill. Talk to people, ask what's important to them, how you could help them. And you might say, you know what? I think we could help you do something. Make it about the other person. Find out what you can do uh, for the other person. It always comes back to you when you do something. It always comes back to you. So see if you could help a person. I mean, that's what really I think the world is about, more positive helping people uh, and, and being a good, honest person who keeps their promises and be the best person you can. And don't beat yourself up when things go wrong because things will always go wrong. That's why you need a risk, a risk management plan. That's why that step four is so important. Uh, that's not the end of the world. You know, uh, all you did was learn and made yourself a better person. So I think whoever put these five steps together, this is a life plan. Yes, it'll help you sell a lot of cookies, or maybe it won't, but then you'll know why, and then you'll fix it, and you'll go through the five steps again with the little changes, the little improvements that you came from learning what didn't work. That's called experience. We all have experiences, and the only reason I'm telling you these things, because I probably made all these mistakes over the, I'm sure I did, everybody makes mistakes, so maybe you can learn from some of the things that worked uh, for me. And this is over my whole career. So uh, I wish you a lot of luck. I and if you have any questions, I'd be uh, happy to hear from any of you if I gave you some good ideas. And maybe uh, you write it down or think about it or watch this if somebody's watching on a replay. Sit down and watch it with a little book like I keep, my little notebook, and say, 
oh, you know, he said this, this doesn't directly apply to me, but I'm thinking, wait, I know this other person and this person does that and this person, maybe I can do that. You'll create your own version of what I'm talking about. As long as you're spreading goodness through the world, that's what it all comes down to. Be a happy, positive person and, and, uh, and it shows, you know, everybody likes happy people. I mean, Nobody wants to hear anybody's problems. We say we do, but we really don't. <laughs> we, want to, we want to hear positive, happy people, and we want to make people happy. That's why that ask an expert, anybody you ask, I would say 99% of the people will say, I'd love to help you. And you'd be surprised. You know, you see all these stories where people ask the biggest names, celebrities, you don't have to do that. There's people in your neighborhood, but everybody likes to help people deep down. And remember this, when you're in that position, when you're the person that somebody comes, this is going to be 20 years down the line or 30 years, when you're the person that somebody says, oh, Mia, can you help me? Angela, can you help me? Alyssa, can you help me? All these people, uh, you're going to say yes, you know, because somebody helped me once. And uh, I would love to help you. This is what I learned. Matter of fact, back in 2020, the world was a crazy place, but these are the things I learned 20 years ago. Maybe I could help you with that. So you're gonna take what you learned today and you earn this badge, you more than earned it with this uh, business plan. If you use it, remember my three steps, focus on what's most important, focus on the long term plan for the end in mind plan for the long term but take action just watching this is not good enough you have to act on it i would write something down now what's going to be your five steps and it doesn't have to be perfect just start scribbling something down whatever you have to do and you'll fill in the details but make it a habit every day every day for over 30 years i've had books like this where i wrote down things uh that i did every day or that i hope to do here Yesterday, uh, there was one thing I didn't get to, but I did prepare for my Girl Scouts. Uh, see, right on the bottom, Christine Walker, Girl Scouts. Uh, oh, yesterday I had to sign the form and prepare because Christine wanted me to sign the release form, which I did the, the first thing the next morning because it was on my list. So I hope you go through life prepared and uh, prepared for the good and the bad, but you'll find it's mostly good if you look at it that way. Yes. Thank you so much, Ed. Um, okay. Girls, I need everyone to take a moment and you will be writing something down. We do want to have your mission statement. So um, you're gonna be turning those into your own leader just so that you can get credit for your badge, but you need to understand what Ed said and um, use that with our sales that are coming up or have already passed, whichever, if you're watching this on a later broadcast, but you're going to need to make sure that you have that mission statement. That is something that we want from you. So make sure you go ahead and get that. All right. And remember cases, not boxes. <laughs> That's Think right. Big. Go big or go home. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ed. Oh, it was a pleasure. My pleasure. I was thrilled to do this. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. And we see that Angela did like the idea of the notebook. I think it's a lot of fun that you uh, brought, brought to our badge 